I'm going to check out some more rare Harry Potter items from my collection and some weird ones as well. Hello to you Greggles, witches, wizards, squibs, muggles and anyone else who might be watching. Hello to you and welcome back to the channel with me, the Greg Who Lived. We're going to be taking a look at some more rare items from my Harry Potter collection. I will warn you, there are some rare items and as you might have seen, some weird items. Thank you for all my new subscribers and if you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to click the subscribe button at the end of this video. If you do enjoy this video, I'll be posting some more of my older videos at the end, so make sure to stick around for more magic. Right, let's get started with the five items that are going to be shown in this video. And up first, we're going to be looking at this Hogwarts snow globe. This snow globe was sold by Noble Collection during the time of Order of the Phoenix, and I remember it was sold for $49.99 originally, but since then I've hardly seen any on eBay. I can't really get that much information about them. And it has become what I think is quite a hard to find object. I didn't think it was that rare when they came out with it. I thought they were probably gonna make quite a few thousand, but I don't think they actually did. And I don't think they sold that many. So since then, as I say, this has become really rare and it's absolutely fantastic. I have seen recently that a few different companies are making snow globes with Hogwarts in, but none of them look exactly like this. What's also interesting about this is it's not just a snow globe. If we take a look on the bottom of the snow globe, we can see that it has a little key, and if you turn it, That's right, it also plays music and the little Hogwarts Express at the front actually goes around the globe as it plays music. We can see here on the front it has the viaduct or viaduct that the Hogwarts Express goes over and on the front or the back we have Hogsmeade Station which is of course where the Hogwarts Express finishes. I think they did an absolutely fantastic job on this, the paint job is really really nice, it's got lots of different types of uh, green, it's got the brickwork for the bridge, and the train is quite cute as it goes round. And of course, it wouldn't be a snow globe without the magical glitter inside. And overall, I think this is an absolutely beautiful object. At the time, I thought £50 was quite a lot. However, I haven't seen these, and I think it's actually become probably worth about £150 now, so this is definitely something I'm going to be keeping hold of. I'm not entirely sure what the musical melody is meant to be, but I guess it has a sort of magicalness about it. As usual, Noble Collection have done a fantastic job, and this piece definitely lasts, and will hopefully last, for many more years to come as well. Moving on to something which is a bit newer and actually came out last year, it goes really well with what I showed you in my previous video, which was a coin collection, because this is the 2019 collection of Harry Potter medallions that were sold by Zavi. These were made to an exclusive number of 2000, and as you can see, it has some beautiful packaging with our favourite Dark Lord and the boy who lived on the back. And it has a gold sticker here, which says 85. So that's what number it is. And if I open it up, we can see all the coins inside as well. This was actually sold last year as an advent calendar, which meant that every day you got to open one of the coins and then place it into this display book as well. I really enjoyed participating each day and opening up a new coin, and some of my favourites would definitely have to be, I think the house crests, which look really, really detailed. Sirius Black is particularly good, and for my favourite, Remus Lupin, just here. It's nice to see that they are making new types of merch that is still collectible, 2,000 isn't that many pieces when you think worldwide, 
and I know that they have made a similar product for this year but the coins are slightly different so if you did miss out on getting this one last year you can try and get yourself one of the new ones for 2020. I think Xavi overall did a really good job with the quality of these and it was nice to have some really popular characters but also their Hogwarts emblems and a few different characters that you might not expect. The coins actually just come out of the bit of plastic that holds them and it has the character name behind and all of them came in this little protective case which undid. It is just one of the coins from the front and they all had this wonderful detail on the back as well. They're very very chunky as you can see. The display book as well is really well made, really high quality finish, really nice card and it makes a really nice collector's piece and something that you can open and enjoy or there's no reason why you also couldn't have it open and displayed on your shelf. It's very versatile and what better way to commemorate some of Harry Potter's most fantastic and magical characters, heroes, villains, than in these medallions and this set. And overall, I thought it was a brilliantly made product, brilliantly packaged, and a real nice keepsake for any Harry Potter fan. Coming up next is one of my favorite items from my whole Harry Potter collection and it's these 2001 original Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone bookends. This type of illustration style product was made before Philosopher's Stone because at that time they didn't really have much of the movie merchandise to create. So like I said before, they used a artist called Fred Bode who designed this style of Harry Potter look, I suppose. And a company called Inesco produced all this type of product. If you do want to find something similar, you can type Harry Potter Inesco into eBay, and it does come up with a lot of similar looking product. However, these are something that I've only seen a couple of actually on eBay, and I got them for £30 about seven years ago, when Harry Potter was sort of not as popular as it is now. £30 for these is fantastic. I would say about now they're probably worth more £70, £80. I absolutely love them and I think what I love most about them is it is from Snape's Riddle which is taken out of the films. It's only something from the book and I love the characterization. I love the different types of plastic to represent the fire that both Hermione and Harry have to go through. I love this style of potion bottle, which was very popular with the early illustration style. And I actually really like the characterization of Harry and Hermione as well. The detail on them is beautiful. I really love the paint job that they've used to create the brickwork, the Hogwarts crest at the top. I just think they're so characterful and I think it's nostalgia more than anything. This to me is Harry Potter from when I was younger. I remember seeing all these types of products. There's something about them that I find really, really special. And I think a lot of people will probably hate them and probably think they're quite old fashioned, quite gaudy, I suppose. But for me, there's just a real soft spot and I absolutely love them. In small details like I love that they have the stars on the inside of their cloaks. I like that Harry's in his little striped t-shirt. Hermione's going for this nice pink shirt. And they just have a really classic and childlike look. And just in case you didn't know which character was which, they even have the names on the bottom as well. For the penultimate item in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at something that was given to winners of a competition during the time of Half-Blood Prince. It wasn't unusual for lots of Harry Potter competitions, giveaways, that sort of thing to be going on to promote any of the new films that were coming out. And so with a lot of the products, it was very low runs that were made and it was very exclusive to just the winners being able to have the prizes. In my previous video, I showed you the Golden Snitch, which was given out at the Deathly Hallows premiere. But for the Half-Blood Prince winner competition, they decided to give out 
this box which takes on the look of a potion box holding potions has potions in maybe a sort of crate look but it actually holds these harry potter pint glasses now i couldn't find out exactly which competition you had to win to win these However, I have looked them up and they are very hard to come by apparently. I only managed to find one other item for sale and they actually sold for $230, which is a hell of a lot more than I actually paid for this. Inside, we have four pint glasses, two of which have Potion 86. We've also got one that has Elixir on and another one that has Bulbadox Juice 18%. And with all four of the glasses, it has the design on the front and on the back it just says Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. These would have been given away to a winner who entered the competition round about the Half-Blood Prince time and this would have been their prize. Why anyone would want to get rid of these from their collection, I'm not entirely sure. But again, I was able to find these on eBay and we actually paid $49.99 for these. The original price that they wanted was I think 75 and we managed to get them down by offering a price. With this item, due to age, maybe storage, the box is slightly broken here which I think will decrease it in value but I did have a look at some others online and they all seem to have this weird bowed top. I'm not really sure if that was a flaw but I just love it overall and even the details of the potion label on the top which is the Zors, which we know is very crucial in Half-Blood Prince. It's just a brilliant item, and I think the product team did a really good job on these, creating something that competition winners would love, while also promoting Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and generating a lot of interest for the oncoming film release. And finally, we move on to one of the weirdest, if not the weirdest item in my Harry Potter collection, which is <laughs> this. Exactly what is this? Well, I did a little bit of research from when I first saw it on eBay and I messaged a few different people, one of which was Peter, known as the Potter Collector, which I'm sure a lot of you also follow, and he had never seen something like this before that had seen something similar. As well as speaking to Peter, I also spoke to one of my friends who is an animator for films. I also looked at the base of this, which has this sort of marker in it, which says Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Theatrical Sculpts, number 14, Official Reference Maquette. So I think with the information that my friends have given me, and with what it says on the bottom, I believe that they use these to recreate artwork of Rupert Grin from the first film for any posters or any type of thing that had Rupert Grin on them. This is a complete accurate representation of Rupert Grin. I presume it's been moulded in clay and then this would have been cast from it. I could find absolutely nothing about it online. This says number 14. So I have no idea how many of them there are. I don't know if you can get other characters. I haven't seen anything like it since, but that just kind of intrigued me. And that's why I have included it in this video because I think it is rare. I don't really know who made it, why they made it, but it's here. And a lot of people do find it a bit creepy. I think it's a bit eerie. He looks a little bit petrified maybe a zombie not entirely sure but i just find it absolutely fascinating i would love to know more about this so if you do know anyone or know any more about this please do comment below and let me know because we need to get to the bottom of what this is and why it was made and we've run out of the way that concludes my part two of rare harry potter items from my collection i really hope you've enjoyed this video i had a lot of good feedback from my last video so I thought I'd make a second one and I've got lots of items so I could probably make a third and a fourth. So if there's anything in particular that you would like to see, 
don't forget to comment below and let me know of any other ideas that you'd like for future videos too. Until my next video, you can catch up on some of my other videos by either clicking here or here, and don't forget to subscribe at the bottom. Until next time, stay safe, stay magical, and I'll be seeing you all very soon. Bye.